Hey folks, so I wanted to introduce to you guys my new paper computer game, Pokemon Stop. This is a very different, a departure for me from my previous games. In case you don't know what a paper computer game is, I'll, uh, I'll put a link to another video that explains that. Um, so yeah, this game is based on Pokemon. It's a little bit based on the original Pokemon game, Red and Blue. It's a little bit based on Pokemon Go, as the title suggests. And it's also kind of a mashup of other things. As you can see here, we got uh, BB-8 from the Star Wars movies. Uh, but, you know, there's also traditional Pokemon things. So there's things from all sorts of different universes in this game. Um, so, the game starts off in, uh, this is called Mallet Town. Uh, it's a lot like Pallet Town, but it's not. And uh, you play as Gash Ketchum, that's him. Um, he is... The cousin of Ash Ketchum, he's always looked up to him, and now he's setting out to become a Pokemon trainer in his own right. So, uh, you know, over here, that's, uh, that's his rival, Mary, kind of like Gary in the original, but, uh, you know, not. Um, and over here, this is the professor's lab, so, uh, let's go over to the other. Show you guys that. So the professor's lab, um... This is Professor Ginkgo. Uh, apparently, it's a tradition in the Pokemon games that the, the professor who lets you choose your starting Pokemon uh, is named after a kind of wood or a tree for some reason. There's Professor Oak, Professor Elm, you know, so on and so forth. So, this guy is Professor Ginkgo. He's uh, actually he's a character from a lot of my other paper computer games named Ginkus because. Ginkgo Biloba is a kind of tree, so, you know, I chose him. Every every time you see Ginkus, he always has, like, this staff that's emitting power, but this time I made a little, uh, you know, addition to it. It's got, you know, a Pokeball that's constantly in the state of... It's, like, half open, so there's constantly energy coming out of it, and he's using that to power his staff in this universe. So, um... Yeah, that's Professor Ginkgo. And... Uh, you know, this is the traditional Pokemon select screen. You've got your one, three Pokeballs you can choose. Um, but unlike a traditional Pokemon game, uh, you it's not, you know, Charmander, Bulbasaur, or Squirtle. It's a, new, it's a, a choice of three different... It's still those fire, you know, grass, and water types, but it's not those same three. Uh, so that's the difference. Um, I'd just like to say that this screen is, um, part of it is traced from some of the original artwork from the creator of Pokemon. This was actually sort of like a shop. I, I, I traced most of it as a shop. Like, like, the original picture was a shop. And, you know, I added Professor Ginkgo to it, who is, like, his body is based on Professor Oak, but, you know, the head and the staff, obviously, I added. Um, there's a lot there's a lot of little things I added like these little nods like the Yoshi egg you got the Triforce over here the tricorder from Star Trek a Green Lantern ring um, so and then I use these little cards uh, as the Pokemon that you can choose and uh, the ones you can choose are the Krypton Firefly that's your fire type for this game you got, all right, so you got your Envy, your Krypton Firefly, and your Creeper. So, Creeper is obviously from Minecraft. Uh, Krypton Firefly is from the old Superman comics. Um, and Envy is an original PCG character. Um, so, just like the other Pokemon games, you choose one. Um, you got your Water type, your Fire type, and your Grass type. You go on to the next screen, and then, just like in the original Pokemon, you have to fight your rival. You have to, uh, you have to fight Mary. And if you beat her, you can go up here, and this you know, so this is the original route. So in this game. Um, I didn't really know how to deal with, um, wild battles with Pokemon, because, you know, in a video game it can be a random chance, but in a paper computer game, 
you know, the way you play paper computer games is there's a player and then there's me and I, you know, I tell the player what happens. So I could just randomly say, okay, a Pokemon attacks you, but that didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I ended up deciding, you know, I'll just draw the Pokemon into the, you know, into the screen and you can just decide if you want to catch it. That seemed like the best solution. Uh, so, but, you know, maybe you guys can make your own Pokemon game and move on it. You know, whatever you want to do. So anyway, uh, over here we got, we got, uh, Pikachu. Um, so you can catch that if you like. And then, you know, there's a Zumbini hidden over there. Zumbini is from the, uh, you know, the old com educational game, Logical Journey of the Zumbinis. This guy's called Kid Funkadelic Jr. He's like a broccoli with sunglasses and a crane dangling out of his head. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, and, you know, this right here is the start of a huge tower. Um, it's a tower we've seen before in some of the other games, but some of the other paper computer games, but this is an alternate universe, so it's a different version of that tower. But see, like, if you go over to the next screen over here, like, they kind of see it kind of connects. And then there's even... There's even a third screen up north of this, and then you can see the full extent of the tower. Um, but, you know, one screen at a time. Um, over here, you got Snorlax. Obviously, he's blocking the path. You have to uh, wake him up to catch him. Um, but if you go back to the, this, this uh, first screen over here, right here, uh, this path over here, that leads to the mutant path. Now, mutant path, this is a pla this is kind of a mysterious place where, um, there's lots of exotic Pokemon. Um, like, over here, as you can see, there's like a giant building buried in the dirt in the distance like you start you're coming from over here that's where gash catch him is coming from and uh you know over here there's just buildings you know along the side of the road these buildings are all abandoned and there's like just kind of radiation streaming up from the sides over here um as if this place maybe was abandoned after a terrible nuclear war or something with radioactive fallout still happening, who knows. Um, and, you know, tucked in between these buildings, there's various interesting Pokemon you can catch. And there's these weird humans running around. They're just humans. Uh, and my theory is, this is based on, you know, the YouTuber Game Theory. He made a theory suggesting that humans might actually be Pokemon themselves. So you can actually catch these humans and use them as Pokemon. Um... So, in the next screen is you have to go uh, inside the, this building and, in you know, inside this uh, half-collapsed building. And that leads you here. You come out uh, over here. And then, you know, it's tilted because this whole building is tilted and sinking into the ground. And then over here there's, like, there's collapsed junk. There's Morlocks you have to fight. Now, Morlocks are sort of an evolution of humans. Because just like, you know, every other Pokemon evolves, since in this game, humans are Pokemon, humans can evolve too. And Morlocks are from, you know, the the Time Machine, which is an old book by H.G. Wells. And uh, the, the, they come from the far future in that book, where humans have evolved into Morlocks. And they kind of like, they're cannibals, they eat the other kinds of humans. So in this game... They're, the Morlocks are the evolution of the human Pokemon, and, you know, you have to fight them to get past, to, you know, go deeper underground. Just like in the time machine, they're, they're, uh, subterranean. And then down over here, you can actually catch the liquor from the Resident Evil games. And then, if you go deeper underground, um... You, you come to this place, which is the Morlock Cave. 
and this is kind of a town. I mean, even though the Morlocks are all hostile and they're trying to eat you, if you use one of your, like, Pokemon that can generate light, like Pikachu or Charmander, anything that's making light will keep them at bay. And you can actually go in the shop that's over here, or the Pokemon Center. And then over here, there's, there's a gym. I mean, like, here's the shop. And I mean, yeah, the, the shopkeeper is a Morlock, so he's, he's hostile. But... As long as you keep him at bay with the light, he will actually sell stuff to you, uh, like Pokeballs and rare candy, which can evolve your Pokemon and whatnot. Um, and then you got uh, here is the uh, well. First of all, this is the Pokemon Center. Um, so this is just like in the Pokemon Center in the games, the, the regular Pokemon games. It can heal your Pokemon. It has a uh, a computer. The computers have uh, location keys. Uh, you know, in addition to being able to store all your Pokemon in the computer, as soon as you access this computer, you get a location key. And the location key, this is the part where this paper computer game is actually based on Pokemon Go. Uh, the location key is a location in the real world. So when Ari plays this, uh, he will have to physically walk to a place in the real world, and then when he gets there, there's a screen, and he can catch new Pokemon there that he can use throughout the rest of the game. So anyway, then, um, you get to, this is Corbatron. He is the, the uh, leader of the Morlocks. He's considered an uber Morlock. And... Uh, you know, on his desk, he's got a Tribble from Star Trek, he's got a model of a time machine, that's kind of like a little nod to the Morlocks being from the time machine. And he's got a little, uh, a little laptop on it with a mysterious symbol. He battles you, uh, he uses his creepy mutant Pokemon, uh, but he, so he's kind of the gym leader. Once you beat him, you get one of the badges, and then you want to come back... Here, go back, you know, back to the uh, main path. And then there's um, there's two other paths. The uh, the first one is the well. Yeah, let's start with the the mountain path. The, or the well, this is let's call this the uh, yeah, this is the this is the robot path um, because this is a super you know obviously this is a sort of like a complex maze type area. You start down here and there's robots wandering around, manicuring the grass, making sure everything is pure. And it's, you know, very bureaucratic. You have to fill out papers everywhere you go. And some of these robots are Pokemon trainers themselves. Some of them are Pokemon themselves. Here you got a Magnetite. That's, off, that's a, a Magnemite, sorry. That's a classic Pokemon. But then we have a new new robot Pokemon. Like like this, this is called a Boxbot. That's a, that's a kind of robot from the other paper computer games. You got BB-8 is up here. You know, there's here's a Voltorb, so there's various things. Once you get past that, there is you come to this area. So you, you like you get to a mountain. You're like you're going over, you know, a bridge from one you know, mountain ridge to another. And then again, over here we got a Pokemon Center shop. This castle is like the gym. Over here you got a Zoo Chomper that's kind of like a creature that is gelatinous and it envelops anything and then it can take on its properties. Over here you got a Metroid. Um, and then here, that's a tech type from Zelda because, you know, they like mountains. This is a, kind of a mountain, so. Anyway, you go inside the... Um, go inside the castle, you meet this region's gym leader, this is the collector, he's a character from 
uh, other paper computer games. Um, he's made by Kurt. Uh, there's a lot of little nods on this screen. This is TikTok. He was the robot from the Wizard of Oz books. This is... That's kind of generic. It could be kind of like Wally. It could, could be kind of like Johnny Five from Short Circuit, but it's just sort of a generic robot. Over here, we got a Cylon from Battlestar Galactica. We got C-3PO's head from Star Wars. We got uh, 3v3 from other paper computer games. Alpha 5 from Power Rangers. So there's, you know, all sorts of stuff going on. But the idea is that this this guy, the collector, he just collects all these robot Pokemon. And he believes that, you know, collecting them is going to make... He, he's going to advance civilization to the next level through robots and you know he battles you so once you beat him you get you know he uses all these robot pokemon once you beat him you get to the next uh you get the next badge and then over here this is the final region um so you got you got these are all ghosts and you can't get past them directly because if you try to walk through them it turns into fog. The ghosts, like, they, they just kind of all merge together. They turn into fog, and you can't see anything, and you end up wandering out. So the only way to go is you have to go up this path. That leads you over to here. Which is, you know, the, now there's kind of more of a, more of a town-type area. Um, this house is the shop, this is the Pokemon Center, there, there, that is an unknown, no, sorry, that's not unknown, that's the mask, that is, a you know, an actual Pokemon from the Pokemon games, um, but there's, all that's a Missing No, <laughs> Missing No is my favorite Pokemon in the original games, so, you know, I couldn't make a Pokemon game and not include Missing No, there has to be Missing No somewhere, and... So I gave him the power in this game, Missing No can, you know, he can distort reality around him. Because, you know, he's a glitch Pokemon, so, you know, in the original game he makes, like, he make, he messes up your file a little bit. Uh, so, this, this Missing No distorts reality around him, and that is, you know, it, it's kind of an attack, but it also harms you. So... If you keep following that path, oh by the way, here's here's the shop. This is one of the Umbrians. Um, the Umbrians are kind of like ghostly beings that uh, they they kind of they have a, they're wearing a mask. The mask is the only physical part of them. If you break the mask, they lose their connection to this reality and they move on to the next plane. But um, so anyway, this Umbrian is. Uh, his name is Greed, and he's the shopkeeper. Uh, they're sort of just shadow people, these Umbrians. So you, you, you know, just it's a shop. You have to buy stuff. Then you come to here, this tower. It's kind of like it's called the Basilica of Origin. It's based on uh, from one of uh, my friend Pierre's paper computer games uh, called Exile. Um, this. In that game, there's the Basilica of Heaven. Uh, so this is kind of based on that. It's called the Basilica of Origin, just to change it to fit, you know, this universe. Um, and you have to kind of navigate your way through the ghosts over here to get up here. Um, over here, there's a green bubble. That is a weird Pokemon. If you look at it, you can't, or you cannot do anything to it. If you try to touch it, you find that you're touching something else, and that was what you'd meant to do all along. And if you, like, dancing around the bubble, these are Umbrians. And those, yeah, I just told you what the Umbrians are, but, you know, in this game, Umbrians are Pokemon as well, so you can catch those and use them. This is the Sphinx. Uh, she's going to ask you a riddle, and if you get the riddle wrong, uh, well, you uh, can't get past. So you have to answer the riddle to get past her and go inside the tower. And inside the tower, here's a... Uh, this is... Um, it's kind of like a mix between 
you know, a church, you know, because the Tower of Babel is sort of like, uh, it's sort of like a church, but it's also not. So in the, in the Pokemon lore, this guy, his name is Arceus, or Arceus, the, there's multiple different official pronunciations, so I'll call him Arceus. Arceus, in the Pokemon lore, created the universe, and in one of the old Pokemon movies, there is, you know, this thing called a space-time, or I think it was a time-space axis, and it shows the positions of the different universes in relation to each other. You got, you know, Arceus's universe, and then this these are Palkia and Dialga. They represent time and space, and they're sort of created by Arceus. So, and they each have their own universe, and then, so this, you know, represents our universe, the Pokemon universe. And, um, this, this thing is actually, like, these platforms actually move to, uh, represent the movements of these universes with respect to each other. Um, and over here, I put, like, th these three little platforms represent the universes from the other paper computer games. So every other paper computer game, you know, takes place over there. And she's going to explain that that this is because this is such an, a powerful t uh, time space uh, axis. It can detect distant universes such as those three. So that's why they're there. Anyway, she's the gym leader for this region, and you have to fight her. Her her belief is that. Her belief is that in order to um, in order to advance the uh, the human race, we have to like basically convert them to ghosts. Well, her goal is more to bring knowledge. Like she wants to bring divine knowledge to the human race, and you know make them better through it. And the best, the easiest way to do that is to convert them into Umbrians and ghostly beings, so that's her aim, that's what she's doing. So you have to beat her, and once you do, you get the last badge. And then, remember the tower from earlier, uh, you, like, once you get all three badges, you can go inside the tower. And in the tower is, um... tower is multiple floors, and it's basically, the tower is run by Team Rocket. Like, see over here you got uh, Team Rocket, dude, you kind of, like, the way I set it up is that on each of these floors, um, there's multiple Team Rocket dudes wandering around, and, you know, you can, you can try to, you know, fight them if you want, but each one of them has a lot of Pokemon, and they're pretty strong, so it's probably better to use stealth. Um, and just avoid these guys. Um, or use your Pokemon in a creative way to get past them. Over here we have, you know, obviously there's more of that. Then, finally, once you get to the top of the tower, you meet the last gym leader. Uh, this is Zuvac. Uh, he is... He's a robotic clown on a stick, and he like he is he's like the most classic character from every paper computer game in the past. And um, you know, normally in other games he's an ally, but you know this is an alternate universe version of him, so he doesn't have to be the same. So um, in any event, he in this universe he, his aim is to destroy. Well, not destroy. His aim is to use the other three people, the, the guy who's the collector who's into robots, Gorbatron the Morlock who's into evolving humans, and Lilium who's uh, the Umbrian who's into, you know, ghostly beings, and evolve in through all those different paths, take humanity to the next level. His idea is he wants to prepare us for greater threats that are coming. That is his aim. So, he's the final gym leader. Once you beat him, you beat the game. 
So yeah, uh, that is pretty much Pokemon Stop. Maybe in a future video I'll show you all the all the Pokemon I made for it and uh, and you know why why I chose them. And uh, but for now, that's uh, that's all for now, folks. Thanks for watching.